Okay, fancy name. It's good to have a nice name for your computer. Think about yours. Mine is called Fun Lap because it's a funny laptop. Fancy names are fun, but it's not fancy is not the best word. Human readable, human memorizable is a better word. IPs are difficult. If my wife tells me that my computer has a problem, can you please copy a file with SCP for me? Okay, I will say, what's your IP address? It says, okay, 192.168.22.143. Okay, I'll send it. It says, okay, can you please send another file? I say, okay, what was the IP address? It's better if she calls her computer Tiger. I just send it to the Tiger. My TV has a connectivity. If I want to connect my remote to my TV, I should insert the IP, which is difficult. I prefer to just call it TV.local, Tiger.local. Or if I want to go to the where? Gmail. I prefer to type gmail.com rather than the IP address of the Gmail, which might change over time and all the stories. So this is why we have human readable names, fancy names for our computers. The most trivial and basic one is the host name. Each computer has a host name. If you check it in etc host name, you can see it. Uh, If I do a host name, my computer's name is FunLab. It is saved in etc host name. If I want to change it, I can do a host name ctl set host name funky computer. Is it changed? Why it is changed? It shouldn't change. Because I'm not root. It is changed. For any reason, I had the access to change this. I'm not sure why. This is, depends on the operating system. Maybe because it's a desktop computer and I should be able to change the name. But normally I shouldn't. Anyway, I changed the name of my computer to Funky Computer. And from now on, if you ping the Funky Computer, you will reach me in your network or funkycomputer.local to say that this is a local computer. If I reboot, the name will remain the same because it's saved in etc host name. If I wanted to just change it temporary, I could do host name Jody computer, simputer. Oh, here I should be root. Strange configuration. Now I'm Jody Simputer, but cat etc host name still shows funky computer. So if I reboot or restart the network services or whatever, I will be back to funky computer. You can also set a pretty name and say uh, host name CTL set host name. Pretty name is the computer in that room. Now, if I know, do a host name CTL status, it will say your static host name is funky computer. Your pretty host name is the computer in that room. So maybe if you are, have a server somewhere, have another computer and it queries this, shows a nicer name it shows the computer in that room my icon name is this one my operating system is this one even my hardware model is this one if i change the computer name with this one and say host name is what i wanted to show you let me check i forgot Host name is this one, set host name and host name and this one is that one. Ah, you can also change your 
uh, transient name and say, I want to call it this for now, but I don't want to change it permanently in etc hosts. So you can also do that one. Uh, maybe I have to run this with sudo to show that pretty name is this one. Then I say sudo hostname testing. Then I say this. Oh, okay. Transient name now is testing. Just wanted to check this. Now I have a static name. I have a transient name. Now I'm calling this one. And this is it. Anyway. So now we renamed or called our computer something. And my girlfriend can ping my computer with ping testing local. In the network, didn't I call my computer in testing? Testing. Strange things are happening. Okay. And now my girlfriend can ping testing and will reach my computer. Okay, so I was sitting here, called my computer T, and now other people in the local network can see me by the name T. But there might be a server somewhere with an IP address which doesn't have a name, or I don't like the name, and I want to call it by a fancy name. This happens a lot in our job. I'm a system administrator, I'm a programmer, I am a whatever, and I need to work with this server, with IP address, this. And I don't want to memorize this. I want to call this something. And it doesn't have a DNS server, it's on the internet. There is a file in the computer which is called etc hosts, which is the answer to this specific case. I can edit that and tell it that four, five, six hundred is called server. From now on, whenever I say server, it will reach here. Saw the difference. In this case, I renamed my computer. Others were able, others in the same network were able to see me with t or t.loc. But in this case, I have one IP address and I assign a new name to it in my own computer. Let's see in the files will be more clear. I have a host name here. So I'm funky computer. I can ping the ping the funky computer and it will work. It is me. But I have a file. It needs sudo to be edited. etc hosts. And here there is a list of IP addresses and names. I can say I want to call this computer new, my own computer. Also, I want to call this computer server1. So now I can say ping server1 and it will ping this one. I can say ping my own computer and it will ping this one. In the people who worked a long time on different projects if you check etc hosts you might see a lot of servers here because whenever i start working on a new server in most cases i will add its name here for example i will say sudo vi etc hosts and will tell okay this specific server whatever it is from now on called my dev server then I SSH to my dev server instead of SSH into that one or copy files here or whatever. So we saw the etc host name and also host ctl, host name ctl command. This is the name of my computer. We also saw the etc hosts where I can say this IP is called this one and from now on on my own computer i will use this to reach this also it works to have a quick look to the top as you can see uh 
The loopback IP is called localhost. FunLab, which is the name of this computer, is called this. This is to make things easier. Ah, uh, so this is etc hosts, and at the end we should speak about DNS configuration and a few more things. So, up to now, I have a name for my own computer on etc hosts. I can call other IPs some names, calling IPs names, but there is one more case. I have a server I want to visit and I don't know the IP address. There is a service which is called domain name service. My computer will ask a DNS server, I want to go to yahoo.com, what's the IP address? And the DNS server will return back the IP address. And from now on, my computer can connect to it. So my host name, etc host for the ones I know and I want to give them new names, DNS servers, are for uh, translating human readable names, domain names to the IP addresses. This is what happens when you say ping google.com. My computer will go to a DNS server, will ask what's the IP address of google.com, will get this answer back and then will ping this. This is how it works. This is configured in etc. Uh, Resolve, resolve.conf. Under etc, resolve.conf, you have lots of information, comments, and then you have this name server, this one. Whenever you wanted to ask about an IP address, contact this IP address and ask about what is the IP address of this domain I have. This is a more general configuration. It is etcresolve.conf. It says I have two name servers. So ask from this or ask from this. Also, I have a domain and I have a search. The domain says uh, is a local domain name. So if a machine in this domain will be able to use a short name. If I say TV, practically it might be if I have a tv.jody.net in this example, my computer, if sees this, will contact TV instead of going to this one. It will consider this local. Search works kind of the same. If I, you say ping TV, it will also try pinging tv.jody.net or pinging tv.company.com. The last thing is the priority of these things. It is defined in a file ns switch, etc ns switch. So less etc ns switch. This is the priority of these names. It says for the hosts, if you have the name and you wanted to find the IP address, first consult files. So go to etc hosts. Then try this, which I don't know what is this. Then try the DNS servers. So first go to etc hosts, then go here. Same thing happens for other things. For example, it says if you want to check a password, first check the files, then check the systemd, then check the SSS subsystem. If you want more information, you can go with manswitch.com and it will give you more information of what this is. I know that I told you the last thing, but you should be aware of one more thing, just awareness of systemd network d. As always, systemd Can I draw a huge mount? No, I can't. Ah, I meant this. Systemd is eating everything. Even the DNS and networks. So nowadays, uh, Systemd, Networkd 
can control your networking and can configure your networking and DNS requests. So be aware of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Networking is a completely huge, huge, huge profession for itself. People study for years to know this. So don't be afraid if it was a little bit confusing. If you're super interested, study Network Plus, CCNA and other stuff. In the next section, we will see how we can troubleshoot a network. Basic troubleshoot.